Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Maker Mondays with Cleveland Public Library and the Great Lakes Science Center. My name is Joy, and today we're going to be exploring the question, what if I lived in the ocean? Now, today, in order to live in the ocean, we're going to need to learn about something called biomimicry. Now, has anyone ever heard of biomimicry before? So biomimicry is what happens when scientists study plants and animals out in nature, and then they use what they observe in order to make observations and create some new ideas or inventions or experiments that are all inspired by what they learn. Now, we're going to see what we learn about biomimicry to see if we can figure out how we could live, possibly live in the ocean. Now, before we do that, think about what do you think humans need in order to survive? Humans need oxygen or air that we can breathe. We need food, we need water, we need shelter. So I wonder if we could maybe create a tool that we could use in the ocean. Now, we're going to see if we can take some inspiration from this book, Papa's Mechanical Fish. But before we do that, we want to make sure that we're on the lookout for something called the engineering design process. Now, scientists and the characters in this story are engineers. And engineers make things. And they build things. And they have their own process. Now, everyone works a little bit differently. Some people are planners and they want to think through everything step by step before they go ahead and get started. Some people are people who ask questions and they think, what if I try this? Why would this work? What would happen if I do this? Some people like to just go straight to create and put things together and see what would happen. All of these methods are completely a-okay because everybody learns and works a little bit differently. But the one thing that all engineers have in common is they all circle back to the improve stage because not everything works perfectly the first time. Sometimes we, people fail over and over and over and over again, and that's okay. What's important is we learn why things don't work or why things do work and keep trying. Now, while we're gonna take a look at the engineering design process, especially in this story. So while I'm reading the story with you, See if you can find moments where the engineering design process happens, whether it's planning or building or even improving. And we're going to see how much of the engineering design process we can see in this story, Papa's Mechanical Fish. So has anybody ever heard this story before? All right, let's go ahead and read it together. So Papa's Mechanical Fish by Candace Fleming Pictures by Boris Kulikov. So, this is my papa. And this is his backyard workshop, where he spends his days thinking, tinkering, and inventing things. Hear that? Clink, clankety, bang, thunk, whirr. That's the sound of papa at work. Clink, clankety, bang, thunk, whirr. Sometimes Papa tries inventing helpful things, like collapsible coat hangers that are easy to store. Sometimes he tries inventing unusual things, like edible socks. And sometimes he tries inventing playful things that just, only just don't work, like steam-powered roller skates. He forgot to put the brakes on. <laughs> But not once has Papa invented anything that works perfectly. I will someday, Papa tells me. All I need is a fantastic idea. But fantastic ideas are not easy to come by. So Papa twiddles his tools and pulls his hair. He racks his brain, sighs, and stares until one day he throws down his screwdriver. Enough thinking, he cries. Who wants to go fishing? I do, I holler. Me too, says my brother Cyril. Don't forget me, adds our sister Mary. 
My Jaja! squeals the baby, Wilhelmina. Woof! barks our bulldog, Rex. I'm so glad I brought along these poles, says Mama. We all troop out to the lighthouse pier and drop our lines into Lake Michigan. Plop, 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 plop. Papa, I say as we wait for a bite, have you ever wondered what it's like to be a fish? A fish, he mutters. A fish. Uh-oh, squeals the baby. Papa's pole clatters to the pier. He leaps to his feet and he whirls me around. Verena, you're brilliant, he whoops. Then he is gone, racing back over the sand dunes to his workshop. Clink, clankity bang, thump, whirr. Ta-da, cries Papa a few weeks later. He opens his workshop doors to reveal. What is it? I ask. It's an underwater vessel, he explains. A mechanical fish. I will dive like a salmon and I will glide like a trout. Papa's mechanical fish is so small he barely fits inside. It has a tube sticking out of the top so that he can breathe and has a pole sticking out the bottom so he can push himself along the lake floor. I call it the white fish, he says. But will it work? What do you think? Will it work? Let's find out. We keep our fingers crossed. Goodbye, Papa, we wave. Farewell, family, he waves back. Then the white fish is launched, sploosh. But, glub, 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 Papa swims back to the pier. It almost worked, he says. Almost, I agree. I think for a minute, then ask Papa, how do fish move through the water? With their tails, says Cyril. With their fins, adds Mary. Fishy, go, squeals the baby. Woof, barks Rex. I'm so glad I brought along this towel, says Mama. She wraps it around Papa's shoulders, but he is too deep in thought to notice. And, clink, clankety bang, thump, whirr. Behold the whitefish too. It is big enough for two people to sit in. It has a wooden fin on top and a wooden propeller in the back. Papa pedals it like a bicycle to make it go. Goodbye, Papa, we wave. Farewell, family, he waves back. Then the whitefish too is launched and sploosh. It dives below the surface, swoosh, but crack, drip, split, drip. Papa bobs to the surface. It almost worked, he hollers to us. Almost, I holler back. I think again, and then I ask, Papa, how do fish stay dry? With special skin? asks Cyril. With scales? adds Mary. No pee pee, squeals the baby. Woof, barks Rex. I'm so glad I brought along this life preserver, says Mama. She tosses it to Papa. But he is too deep in thought to notice. And... Blink! Clankety bang, thump, whirr. Behold the white fish three. It is big enough for three people to sit in. It has a plunger to make it go up and down. It has a steering wheel to make it go left and right. It has levers instead of pedals, and it is covered in waterproof copper. Goodbye, Papa, we wave. Farewell, family, he waves back. Then the Whitefish 3 is launched, sploosh, it dives, swoosh, it chugs beneath the waves, clack it, clack it, clack it, but, crump, Papa clings to a buoy. It almost worked, he 
he says minutes later as we pull him into the rowboat. Almost, I say. I think some more. And then I ask, Papa, how do fish know where they're going? Can they see underwater? Says Cyril. Do they have good eyes? Adds Mary. Peekaboo! Squeals the baby. Woof! Barks Rex. I'm so glad I brought along these oars, says Mama. She rows towards shore. But Papa is too deep in thought to notice. Now he barricades himself in his workshop. Clink! Clunkety bang, thump, whirr. He does not come out. Thump, clunk, whack. We cannot go in. Tap, tap. He even covers the windows so we can't peek. Zap. What's the big secret, I ask. Wait and see, Papa says. Just wait and see. Clink, clankety bang, thump, whirr. At last he flings wide the workshop doors. Surprise. Ooh, we gasp. Ah. The whitefish four is big enough for seven people to sit in. It has an air cooling system, an air compression system, and an air purifying system. It has a steam boiler to run the engine and a battery to run the headlights. It has velvet carpeting and comfortable chairs. Along its length are a dozen portholes. Papa grins. Who wants to go for a ride? I do, I whoop. Me too, says Cyril. Don't forget me, adds Mary. Go bye-bye, squeals the baby. Woof, barks Rex. I'm so glad I brought along lunch, says Mama. One by one, we drop down through the hatch. Then Papa seals it behind us, takes his place at the controls, and sploosh, swoosh, clackety, clackety, clackety. Wow. Hours later, we rise to the surface. We glide to the beach. We spread out a blanket and feast on ham sandwiches. Papa, I say between mouthfuls. That idea was absolutely, positively fantastic. Brilliant, says Cyril. Clever, adds Mary. Yay, squeals the baby. Woof, barks Rex. I'm so glad you brought me along, says Mama. She gives Papa a big, big smooch. Then a seagull flies overhead. I toss, my, I toss at my bread crust. Have you ever wondered what it's like to be a bird? I ask. A bird, Papa mutters. A bird. Uh-oh, squeals the baby. Clink, clankety bang, thump, whirr. The end. So, did you see any steps from the engineering design process in that story? There were, so I saw quite a few. So there were lots of things called blueprints that were these pictures right here. So every time a new, Papa designed a new submarine, there was a picture that went with it. So a blueprint is a plan or a drawing of what you want to build. So there's the planning stage. And then he built lots of different models of a submarine. There's another picture. He built lots of different models of his submarine and tried them. So that's create. And Papa got really frustrated throughout the story, right? Because did the submarine work right the first time? No. But instead of giving up, he went back to the drawing board and designed a brand new design and improved because he was able to figure out why certain things in his original designs didn't work, which means he was learning and trying new things. Now, in the story, there were lots of moments inspired by biomimicry. So can you think of anything about what our characters observed inspired new elements of the submarine design? So think about fish. 
So in this story, there was the first design of the submarine, right? And then they added something to help it move. So fish have fins. So the second submarine had fins and it also had a propeller to help it move through the water like fish have their own fins that can propel it through the water. Then the white fish three tried to figure out how to make it waterproof or like when they asked how fish stay dry, which is when it added copper like fish have scales. And then the white fish four included portholes and headlights because fish have eyes, right? We want to be able to see where we're going. So the characters in the story were inspired by biomimicry and used what they observed about fish in order to make the best submarine possible. Now, do you think that this design can help humans explore the ocean? Maybe. There's lots of different ways you can build submarines, but hey, this is a steerable mechanical fish. That means that humans can go in the water and study whether it's water or fish or anything that lives in the ocean, really. So the cool thing about this story is it's actually based on a true life, real person. So this is based on the story of an inventor named Laudner Phillips. So he lived in the 1800s and he created one of the earliest steam powered submarines. Now he also invented an underwater diving suit. Now, what's really cool about him is he actually did, like I said, he built submarines. In fact, he lived near here uh, in Michigan. And for years, there was actually one of his early submarine designs stuck at the bottom of a lake up, in, up there. Now, do you think that having one of his designs stuck at the bottom of the lake stopped Lauder Phillips from building stuff? Probably not. And that's the cool thing about engineering. If something doesn't work right the first time, whether it's something small, is something you build doesn't, something you build breaks, or something big like a submarine sinks to the bottom of a lake, there's lots you can still learn and explore and improve on. So we're going to see if we can be like Laudner Phillips and our characters in Papa's Mechanical Fish and design our own ocean tool that will help humans survive and learn in the ocean. So let's take a look at the materials that we have as I throw the paper off the table. So I have some paper and we have some pipe cleaners. We do got scissors, scissors, make sure we are very safe with our scissors. We have paper plate, mine has flowers on it because I like flowers. I have some cardboard tubes. I've got pencil, some markers, and some duct tape. Now, if your materials match mine, fantastic. If yours don't match mine, that is okay. Maybe you have your own set of materials that match mine, but maybe you have something at home that you want to add to it. Like I just found a bottle cap over there. I think this might, you know, make a good addition to my ocean tool. So, we're going to see if we can design a tool. Now, a tool can be absolutely anything you want for life in the ocean. So I think I'm gonna be inspired by the story and make a submarine like this one, but add my own little piece inspired by biomimicry. So if you wanna make a submarine too, go for it. If you have another idea, try that too. Maybe you have an idea for a tool that helps clean the water. Maybe you have an idea for something that delivers fish food or a way for humans to live underwater long term, or maybe you want something that draws maps, whatever you want to build, go for it. So I think I'm going to start in the plan phase and I think I'm going to draw a design. So I wanna be inspired by biomimicry. So I want to see if I can make something that looks like a fish. So I'm going to take a look at some of the fish in my book. Now, keep in mind, these are not photos of fish. Not all fish are shaped this way, but some are. Let me see if I can find a good picture of a fish in here. 
There we go. Here's a fish. So I want to see if I can do something similarly shaped to my fish. I'm going to put my shape down there. Now, as, I, as you're designing, think about what humans need to survive. We talked about it a little while ago. So remember, what if your tool is to help humans live in the ocean, what does it need? It needs to make sure that if humans are going to be in it, it needs to be able to hold oxygen and provide shelter. If they are going to live in it, you need a place for the food. Now, think about what you can use from animals also to inspire your design. So I'm going to put my design here. All right, so this is my submarine design. It looks kind of like a fish. So I know approximately what shape I want. And I know I want some sort of propeller fin in the back and some sort of fin on the top, maybe a fin on the bottom as well. But I have another special piece that I'm going to add once I start building. Right, right there. So this is my idea for my design, and I want to see what I can build, what I can use to build. So if you're still designing, keep designing. So you can choose if you want to jump to your design or your building. I'm actually going to make this a little bit darker so you can see my design a little bit better. And you'll see that I was really inspired by biomimicry because if the question is what if we could live in the ocean, I wanted to get some ideas from things that actually live in the ocean, which is why biomimicry is so cool and it helps scientists out a lot because said, who knows how to live better in the ocean than fish do. So this is my submarine. Like I said, it looks kind of like a fish. I know. But now I'm going to go ahead and build my ocean tool. It is going to be a mechanical fish submarine, just like in the story. But like I said, if you have any other ideas for an ocean tool, you do not need to build a submarine like I'm going to. So let's see. I wonder what I have that can be used as the body of my submarine. I think I'm going to go with a plate because, you know, that works. So let's see. Thinking about what humans need. They need oxygen. So if I were just to say like the, this marker was my human, it just sits on top of the plate. Not a lot of oxygen there because it's going to be water. So I'm going to close it so that way there'll be room inside for a person to sit in there. And then I'm just going to seal it. Sort of make my waterproof scales just like a story. Do, do, do. Tearing tape hard and I've stuck it to itself. Here's my fail. My first one already, I have stuck tape to itself. But I will keep trying to tear tape because I am determined to tear tape well. If anyone was with me for the Maker Monday episode when I made space helmets, I had the same struggles with tearing tape. So I need to improve my tape tearing technique. So I'm going to seal this up right here because if I'm going to put a person in here, even if it, listen, I know this is not big enough to fit a real person. I'm going to be a pretend person for our living in the ocean. I need to make sure that it's got, it's waterproof. So these are going to act as my scales because, you know, we want to make sure that we can breathe because people can't breathe water last time I checked. Unless you are some sort of super cool ocean-based superhero or a mermaid or merman or mer creature or actually a fish. But no, real people, regular people who walk on land cannot breathe water. So we need to make sure that if we are do, gonna do any sort of ocean tool or habitat for people that it is 
nice and watertight. Let's see. Right now it's looking kind of like a taco. It will look more like a submarine eventually. So I know fish have eyes. And I want my scientist who uses my tool, my submarine tool, to be able to see. So I think I'm going to add something called a periscope. So that way they can look from inside the submarine and see what's going on. So... I'm gonna use my pipe cleaner and make a periscope. So I'm just kind of looping it so that way you can see. And the cool thing about periscopes is they can move. So if I put this in here, sort of feed that in there, my scientists can look through the tube on the inside and there's, in most periscopes, there's like little mirrors that help you see. But now my submarine has an eye, so that way it can see where it's going. And scientists can use that to watch what's happening in the water, see if they can study the waves or currents, see what fish they can observe and learn more about the ocean, and also not crash into stuff. Because that would probably break the submarine and hurt whatever it crashes into. As someone who is very clumsy, I can confirm crashing into stuff. Not fun. So, let's see. All right, so I have my periscope. That way they can see where they're going. So I also need something like a fin to propel my submarine forward. So I'm gonna use my other pipe cleaner to make sort of a fin propeller thing. So I have my propeller that can flap back and forth and I've decided mine can also spin, because why not? So I'm gonna put that in there. So I have more going on with my submarine that can propel itself forward, kind of like the the submarine and Papa's mechanical fish. So already I've taken what they what they learned about in the story with biomimicry. I have my fin, my fin propeller that can said that can move up, down, back, forth, spin to help this steer and move it forward. I have my periscope so that way. Whoever's driving the submarine can not only see where they're going, but observe the water and the animals around them. I have my waterproof seal on there, so that way my scientists can breathe. My ocean tool is shaping up pretty well. I think I need a fin. Because remember we saw how fins help fish swim through the water. And if my design is something that moves through the water, I need to make sure that it can move through the water pretty well. So I'm just cutting up my cardboard tube and I'm going to put it on my fish submarine thing. Let's see, got my fish, make sure it's nice and aerodynamic, water, di hydrodynamic, thank you. So we got my fin. I don't know if I want something that's triangular though. I think I'm gonna go more round. There we go. Okay, I got one fin, I'm gonna attach it now. So that way it can kind of just glide through the water. Hey, I cut it off nicely. That way it can just glide through the water. like so. I'm going to add a bottom fin as well. Now, another thing 
thing that fish have that I can add to my submarine are gills. Now, just like humans, fish need oxygen. They just breathe it differently. So fish breathe underwater instead of on land like humans do. So they have gills that filter oxygen out of the water as the water passes over them. So I'm going to see if I can add my own gills or in the horn my water filter to the side of my submarine. That way, the scientists who are traveling in my submarine in the ocean can keep getting an oxygen supply, even though they're underwater. So think about where are gills usually on a fish? Does anyone know? They're usually kind of like on the side, like neck area. So I'm going to make a water filter inspired by gills. And that's another example of biomimicry. I'm thinking about how fish breathe and I'm applying that to my submarine, which is gonna be underwater. So let's see, I'm gonna, I can make, this is the base of my water filter. And I'm gonna do some black tape. I'm gonna make some gills to filter oxygen into my submarine because it's good if you're going to go underwater it's good to have your own oxygen supply that's kind of why if you've ever seen scuba divers they have those tanks that they have underwater with them that's their oxygen supply but it's always good to be able to get oxygen whenever you need it and my hope is that by giving these scientists in my submarine this water filter, they can actually stay in the submarine longer than they would be able to without it and get more information. So I think this could be good, these could be good gills. And it makes some for the other sides. So we can have two water filters. Let's see. Da -da. How are you doing with your ocean tools? Are you coming up with some cool ideas based on biomimicry and things that can help humans survive underwater? And live in the ocean? I think you guys are coming up with some pretty cool ideas. Who knows, maybe one day we'll be able to take our small ocean tools and make them into the real life, big, large scale things. And you can invent the next super cool piece of technology. So I have my gills right here. These are my gills, like so. I'm gonna attach them, attach my water filters, my water filter gills to the sides of my submarine. Let's see, like so, get some tape, and attach them to my submarine. And what's really cool is the way that these stick out, these could also maybe act, so you see how some fish have fins on their sides? Now these aren't acting as fins, because they're not really propelling at all. That's what the top and the bottom fins are for. But it's another interesting connection that a lot of fish have fins on their sides, just like they have gills. So it's even more inspired by fish. Because I said I could put the gills on the top or the bottom, but that's not where gills are. And this way, every, all, my, all this weight is balanced. So I have weight on the top, weight on the sides, and that way, my submarine won't just be floating along and then go thunk. We want to make sure that our weight is balanced. Well, I hope it won't do that. We want to make sure that our weight is nice and balanced. 
So I'm going to go ahead and add my gills to my other side, my water filter. It helps filter the water and gives my scientists who are in the submarine exploring extra oxygen. Come on. There. I'm gonna, so I think my next tool is gonna be a way to go underwater and make it easier to rip duct tape. That is my next tool. Because in my mind, do it underwater tape ripping. That is my new plan. Because I am clearly not great at it on land. <laughs> but that's okay. That is okay. All right, let me get my, get my water filter on there. Do. All right. So I have my so I have my water filter on there. I have a periscope to help see. I have my waterproof seal like scales. I've got fins. I've got a propeller that can help move my submarine forward. I have my water filter that is inspired by gills. So let's see, I wonder what else I can add to my submarine that helps with, that helps us live underwater. So I have, let's see, I have my periscope that can help us see things, but I think I'm gonna add a couple of portholes. Maybe towards the back because the periscope can move, but I can still add some portholes. Those portholes, remember, are those round windows. I know I said I was going to put them in the back, but why not put them in the front? Because then it's even more inspired by my fish. It is my very own mechanical fish. The mechanical fish that we can use to live underwater. So, as I put the mark cat back on, so I have my very own mechanical fish or my own little submarine inspired by this story. So, like I said, I got the fins, I got that help the submarine move, I have this propeller that also works kind of as a fin, you can it spins like that, that propels it forward. I have my periscope, that way anyone inside can look, and my periscope can move so they can look up to the side, to the side, front, maybe even back if they can get it to rotate all the way around, that would be really cool. Got some portholes to see what's right in front of you. You have your water filter gills, so that way the oxygen gets filtered out of the water as it passes over and gives the scientists inside a little bit of extra oxygen for everything they need. So this is my underwater tool. It is a mechanical fish submarine inspired by Papa's mechanical fish. And I bet that all of you out there who are building with me have come up with your own super cool ocean tools as well. Now, if you're building and you come up with an idea for another tool, you can make your very own blueprint. So this is just a quick rough sketch. But if you noticed, the blueprints in the story have a lot more detail. They have, let me see if I can find one. They have, so they have a lot of detail, they're labeled, they have all these crazy ideas. And the cool thing about making blueprints is even if you don't have the materials to build them right away, you can still put all sorts of ideas in there. So. Think about, as you're building your tools, think about, is there another tool that you might want to try to build that you may not have the materials for right now? Maybe you could even think of a habitat for people to live in long term. So this is my submarine that goes floating around. I want to see, can I make a habitat? So even if I were to just quickly draw something right now, I would probably want to make a habitat 
that is reminiscent of coral reef because coral reefs are pretty cool. They live in the ocean and they're really, really pretty. So if I were to do a habitat, I would try to make something that's large and strong. And let's see, so I have this and there's, so there's these like, I would make sure that there are these caves so that way the submarines can go in and out. So I'm gonna put that on there and then, and the cool thing about corals is because they're so large, you can put a lot of people in this habitat that I'm drawing right now that is inspired by coral reefs. So this is a very quick rough sketch. It does not, corals look much cooler than this. Um, I'm, this is my very beginning of a blueprint. If I were to sit and make a full blueprint, I would be here for at least another hour. So let's see, so I'm gonna label that. So, so this is a dock for submarines inside the coral and it will be nice and large. So keep thinking about what sorts of ocean tools, maybe even habitats you could make with other materials and draw some blueprints. So if I were to do a coral reef have inspired habitat, I would learn that from biomimicry. That's how I got the size. And the texture of coral is really interesting. So because these are textured, I would use that texture to create different systems. I'm just coloring it orange now. But so I would probably have one section of coral that cleans ocean water, cleans water, because sometimes there's pollution. And then I would have another section that's the water filter, kind of like my gills are, and so on and so forth. So see, while you're building your tools, see how many instances of biomimicry or different ways we can help humans survive underwater, you can think of to improve on your ocean tool design or even design a new ocean tool or possibly even an entire underwater habitat. So you all did an excellent job today using the engineering design process, learning about biomimicry, and using all of that to help us create our very own tool to help us live in the ocean. So keep working on those designs, whether it's building or drawing or both, and make sure that you tune in next week for another Maker Monday video with a new story and new activity. So keep creating, have fun, and until next time, stay curious.